Thank you all so much for being in our audience this morning. Today is a day that we honor not only God in our worship today and the Lord Jesus, but we honor our mothers as well. I'd just like to express my appreciation to all of you who are mothers and to say to you that you are a very, very special being that God hath made and placed on his earth. I want this morning to take a little bit of a different approach uh, somewhat in talking about our mothers. You know, there are a lot of mothers in the Bible. We could name several of them, especially that of the mother of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Consider, if you will, when you think about the mother of the Lord. She was handpicked by God. There must have been a reason... And as we read and as we study our Bibles, we find that there was a reason. God had looked at her and decided that she was unlike any other on the earth. And God chose Mary. And one of the things that's most impressive to me about Mary, the mother of our Lord, not only did she give birth to Jesus, she stood at the foot of the cross and watched her little boy die. Consider the thought, if you will, of what a mother really and truly is about. When someone becomes a mother, there is no doubt there's a special relationship, should be a special relationship, between that mother and that child. We're going to look at some of the things this morning to honor thy mother according to God's word. How is it that can we, we can really and truly honor our mothers today? Now let me just start with a verse of scripture in the book of Proverbs as the wise man himself Solomon gave us in Proverbs 23 and verse number 24. To honor thy mother requires, if you will, righteous living. And when I say that, I, I mean it with all of my heart. There's no greater way that we could ever honor our mothers than to live a good, wholesome, decent Christian life. And many of you that are sitting there as mothers this morning understand exactly what I'm talking about. What would you want most for your children? That they live their life in such a way as to honor not only you, but to honor God. What does it profit a man if he gained the whole world and lose his own soul? There's not a mother among us today or a mother on the world today, I would think, that would want their child to be lost. I think without a doubt, one of the ways we can honor our mother more than anything is to live a good, wholesome, righteous life. That he, begetteth a wise, he that begetteth a wise child shall... Have joy of him. Mothers, isn't it wonderful sometimes when we can celebrate our children? When we can rejoice about the things that our children do. And all of the things that they're capable of achieving in life. Who does it make the happiest? It should make the mother the happiest. The father too, of course. But we're talking about the mothers today. Thy father and thy mother shall be glad, he says, and she that bear thee shall rejoice, shall rejoice. I think <laughs> I always thought it was wonderful to be number one in my wife's life. But there was a time in life when I became number two. And I don't mind that at all, and I'll tell you why. When you read that verse of scripture, and the Bible said, and I know there's a difference between husband and children, but consider the thought. Thy father and thy mother shall be glad, and she that bear thee shall rejoice. Those of you who are mothers, I recognize the fact that childbearing is a very difficult process physically. But then when you see that mother hold that child, 
and see that love within that mother for that child. It's an amazing thing. I'm very hard on how people feel today about things that are unspeakable, such as abortion. I don't know how it is that anybody that could ever understand the birth of a child could ever engage or ever even think about something of that situation. In consideration of the thought in the Bible, she that bear that child shall rejoice. In Proverbs 10 and verse 1, unrighteousness. If you want to find something that really and truly is dishonorable toward a mother, it's when a child is living in an unrighteous fashion. Unrighteousness brings dishonor. A foolish son is the heaviness, the Bible said, of his mother. Thought much about how it is that sometimes mothers are disappointed. And how is it sometimes that they are disappointed about their children? It's whenever it is that their children doesn't choose the pathway of right, but rather chooses the pathway of wrong. Today we give honor to our mothers, but we understand that a foolish child, a foolish son, the Bible said, is the heaviness of his mother. There's a lot that can be said about how far a mother will go with a child. There are good mothers, there are bad mothers, there are good fathers and bad fathers. But we're talking about today a good mother. We started out by talking about Mary, the mother of our Lord. Can you imagine that day as she stood at the foot of that cross? And as she looked up at her son that she gave birth to. And she saw those nails. She viewed the crown of thorns upon his head. She watched the blood flow from his body. And she watched him take his last breath. The hardest funerals I've ever done. More so probably than anybody in this part of the country. But the hardest ones I've ever done is when a mother gives a little child up. And you see that mother as she grieves with all of her heart. And you see that mother as she knows and understands, I gave birth to that child. It's because of God. And then you see that grief. And there's no greater grief in all the world than that of giving up a child for a mother or a father. But we're talking about mothers today. In Exodus 21, and at verses number 15, 16, and 17, it's so sad to me that sometimes people, they even abuse a mother or a father. And what does the Bible teach about abuse? And you know, sometimes abuse can be not so much physical as it can be mentally. You know, it doesn't take a, a striking of the hand to abuse someone. There can be a number of things that can constitute abuse. I've witnessed abuse sometimes when there wasn't any physical altercation. It was simply a mind game and words that were spoken. Things that you say and can't take back. And I've thought much about the abuse that the Bible speaks of that's forbidden. You know what that abuse is? It's the abuse of a mother. Can't do that. No, God said, you can't do that. The Bible said, he that smileth his father or his mother or curseth his father or mother. During the period of time that this was written, whenever it was that somebody stepped out of bounds and they, they abused the mother, 
You know what happened to them? The Bible says, and they shall be put immediately to death. I think there's a reason God put that there. There's a special, special relationship to the mother. Carry you in her body. Nurture you till you're able to stand on your own. Now, like I say, there's good mothers and bad mothers. Don't get me wrong. There's good mothers and bad mothers. There's some that don't have the mothering instincts and some that will never have them. But we're talking about the one that does today. We're talking about the mother that would do anything in the world for that child, including give her life for that child. That's the most important thing to consider. Forbidden, yes. No abuse, God says to the mother. Can't do that. You want to honor, you live righteous. You live righteous before the mother. Can you imagine the, the pride within Mary as she witnessed some of the things that her son was capable of? There was Jesus as he went about making the blind man to see that never had seen before. There was the man who couldn't walk and she saw her son raise him to a point where he could not only walk, he could run. She saw her son be able to raise back from the dead and give back to a mother, a child that had died. She witnessed that. She saw it. Can you imagine the pride that must have been in her as she said, this is my son. This is my son, Jesus Christ, that has raised back from the dead and given life. I can only imagine the pride that she must have had concerning her son. And I would hope and pray that as we talk about our mothers today, we can give honor to them in such a way as we can be prideful of having a mother. I thank God I still might have my old mother. She's sitting right over there. I'm glad she's with me today in church. The sad thing today, today for me is this is the first time I can ever remember in my lifetime that Vicki's been without her mother on Mother's Day sitting over there right with her. And I said to Alan this morning, I know he wouldn't mind me saying this. He had a great mother. She was always here with him for as long as she could be. She brought him from the time she could hold him in her arms. And she kept him there. Till the last time that she could. There's lots of things to consider about a mother. Whenever you think about Proverbs 29 and verse 15, the discipline of the mother. Now, here we have... Something very important. I think mothers, sometimes they have to do more discipline than fathers. <laughs> Anybody want to agree with me on that? Sometimes mothers, they, they're, they're always there, you know. And, and mothers are, sometimes they're the disciplinarian in the family. So, well, well go, go see your mother. You know, that's what we do, isn't it, fellas? Go, go see your mother. Think about this for a moment. The discipline of a mother. The Bible said the rod and the reproof, it giveth wisdom. But a child left to himself bringeth his mother, his mother, this is what the scripture says, bringeth his mother to shame. A mother must care. She must care in order to discipline correctly. And a lot of times we just don't see the importance of that. He said, a child left to himself bringeth the mother to shame. You know, without discipline, sometimes people cause lots of problems for their mother and their father. But we're talking about mothers. And a child left to himself without any form of discipline brings the mother to the shame. I didn't see that with Christ, but I've seen it with many others that I read about and study in the Bible where they didn't do the right thing, and they brought their mother to shame. There's much to be said about the discipline of a mother. 
There she is. She's got the responsibility to rear and to help and to raise that child in the best way that she knows how. The Bible says, through the nurture and the admonition of the Lord, we're supposed to raise our children. We nurture them, we admonish them, but we do it with God's speed, with God's word. I've thought many times about how many times I witnessed Vicky's mom sit and read the Bible to some of the children that were there. I just use that as an example because there we have within itself the discipline that children need to understand. It needs to come from God's Word. They need to know what God's Word teaches. And mothers, if you haven't done that, I encourage you to take your Bible out and say, hey, look, it's time for us to read the Bible, kids. Read it. Read it to your children. In Luke chapter 1 and verse number 30. In the New Testament, <clears throat> the writing is a true mother. A true mother will live to find favor with God. Whenever we think about a godly mother, she's going to live her life in, a, in order to find favor with God. Listen to what this scripture said. Fear not, Mary, talking to the Lord's mother. Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. Blessed art thou, thou, Mary, among all women. Have you ever thought about that? How did that come to be? The Lord had looked at all of the women that was on the earth, and he chose this one. And then we have the passage. Fear not, Mary. Don't worry. You have found favor with God. I wonder how it was that she found favor with God. It must have been that when God saw her, he said, Man, look at the, look at the woman she is. Look at what she's capable of. Look at what she's done. Look at her heart. You remember what we studied in our Bible study this morning? You know what God sees? He looketh on the heart. And I can assure you, whenever God looked at Mary, he's looking on her heart. And he said, oh, this is the one I want to bear my son. This is the one I want to bear my son. wonder what it was about her. I've often thought about that. You know, there wouldn't have been many flaws, would there? There wouldn't have been many imperfections, would there? Oh, I wonder today, our mothers, a lot of mothers need to understand God is looking. He's seeing. A lot of our young mothers... God is looking, he's seeing, and a lot of our older mothers, he's still looking, he's still seeing. Somebody told me not too long ago, I can't go back, and I can't fix anything that needs fixing now. And that's true, you can't. We can only live from this day forward, and do everything humanly possible to be pleasing in the sight of God from this day forward, if we've not been pleasing in the past. Today, as we honor our mothers, let me just say, mothers, from this day forward, if you've done everything you think you need to do, that's great. But if you haven't, and you need just a little bit of movement in another direction, utilize that time. Understand this is a special day we give honor to our mothers, and let it be that our mothers carry the weight of knowing God is watching, God is looking. I love it whenever I see a mother and she's, she's running along after that child and she's making sure that it, nothing happens to it, but making sure that it's doing whatever it needs to do. It's also an unbelievable thing to see a mother feed her child. Whether she feeds it physically or she feeds it from her body, it's a wonderful thing to know that that mother's providing life, life-giving nourishment to that child. God made it that way. And mothers are so special, that's a part, that's a very special, precious thing. I can remember one time as, as Matthew was a little bitty boy, and he, and he said to me, he witnessed that one time at, at, a, at a place that we were at, and, and this lady, 
she was feeding this little small child and she had this little thing over him. And, and Matthew said to me, he said, Daddy, he said, she's feeding that baby. I said, yes, she is, son. She's providing nourishment. She's giving life to that child. She's providing nourishment to that child. He said, that's, that's something, isn't it? I said, yes, it is. I said, that's God. That's a miracle. That's what God did. He made it so the mother could provide life to that child. If there was nothing else anywhere that she could get her hands on, guess what? God put it in that mother that she could provide for that child nourishment to keep it alive. Somebody said, well, you're going out on a limb, and I may very well be, but I can tell you that is a God, a very God thing that God did for a mother. Dad can't do it, but mother can. And whenever you think about Isaiah 48 and verse 15, a mother must not neglect her child. A mother must not neglect her child. Now, there are a lot of mothers that don't, they're not ready to become a mother. And sometimes it happens before they are ready, and then that neglect falls into the picture. But a mother must not neglect her child. Can a woman forget her child, he said, that she should not have compassion on the son of her womb? The responsibility is if you take on the action of becoming a mother and you don't step up to the plate and fulfill your responsibility, you're in trouble with God. And there are a lot of them today that's in trouble with God. If you take on that responsibility of becoming a mother, God is going to be happy with that. But if you shirk that responsibility, it's going to be an awful thing come judgment. And so, you know, mothers are very special, but mothers must not neglect their children. They must take it on themselves to understand this is my responsibility. I put myself in this position and, and now I'm giving birth to this child and this is my responsibility. And thank God for those it may have not given birth to them. But let me tell you what they're doing. They're providing everything needful to those children being a mother to them. I thank God for them. For those that will take on those little children and raise them and teach them and love them and mother them. You want to know what makes God smile when he sees that person Take on that responsibility. That child needs a mother. And I'm here. And I'm going to do it. It makes all the difference in the world. There's some consideration that needs to be given in Titus chapter 2, verse 4 and 5. The responsibility of the woman, and especially a mother, that they be in behavior as becoming holiness, Teachers of good things, listen carefully, that they teach the young women to be sober, to love their husbands, to be discreet, to be chaste, to be keepers at home, to be good and obedient to their own husbands, that the word of God be not blasphemed. Now here we have a descriptive terminology giving us the responsibility of not just being a woman, but also becoming a mother. Some of the things that we read here. Behavior that becometh holiness. Can you be proud to be a mother because of the holiness in your life? Can you understand the principle of what we're talking about here when he says, teach the young women. Teach the young women to be sober and to love their husbands. To be discreet. To be chaste, that's pure. Keepers at home. You know, I said something one time I wished I'd never said. I've said that a lot of times. I've done things like that a lot of times. But I said concerning this little girl, I said, she don't know no better. And she couldn't cook nothing. And I said, yeah, I don't know and then all at once, somebody spoke and told me, said, she didn't have a mother to teach her. You've got to give her an opportunity. She didn't have a mother to teach her. 
And I thought, man, I've stuck my foot in my mouth. I've done it more than one time in life. A lot of times they're not able to do some of the things that they should be able to do because there wasn't a mother there to teach them. I've often thought about some of those little children that they could just take right up and do whatever it took. And then you look behind them and you know what you saw? You saw a mama right behind them teaching them. Making sure they understood. Making sure how they did it. You know, all of us fellas, most of us, we like to eat. And you know, people say today, they say, well, you know, my wife can't cook. You know, she can't cook nothing. She can't even boil water. And a lot of times people will say things like that, and then when you really and truly look at it, maybe there wasn't a mama behind that girl that taught her how to cook, taught her how to do the things that she needed to do. You see, mothers are very special in lots of ways. Remember what he said, teach the young women to be sober, to love their husbands, to be discreet, chaste, and keepers at home, and good, and obedient to their own husband, that the word of God be not blasphemed. Mothers are teachers. And I'll tell you what, there's a lot of things mothers can teach. And a lot of mothers do. In 2 Timothy 1 and verse 5, we read this passage. We're getting close to the end of the lesson this morning, but we're honoring our mothers and looking at what the Bible says about, with God's word, mothers. A mother must teach those to whom she mothers. And I want you to think about this writing. This is in 2 Timothy chapter 1 and verse number 5. We're talking about Timothy. He says, when I call to remembrance the unfeigned faith, this was Timothy's faith he's talking about, that is in thee. He was a faithful man. And Paul is saying, look, look, I, I, this faith that you have, I'm looking at it. I call to remembrance. It's an unfeigned faith. Now, where did he get that faith? Where did Timothy come up with that faith? Listen to what the Bible says. I call to remember the unfeigned faith that is in thee, Timothy. And listen to what he said. Which dwelt first in your grandmother, your grandmother Lois. And then also, Timothy, in your mother Eunice. And I am persuaded that in thee also. Think about it this way. For all the many years I've been in the, the church. Most of the time when you see those children come through the door, it's mama that's bringing them. Not always. Now it seems to me we have wonderful dads along with the mother that brings their children. But I've seen it whenever it was there were just very few dads sitting there. But boy, there was a host of mothers. They were there. Wonder why? Because they were fulfilling their responsibility. They were bringing their children, teaching their children about God. Where's dad? I don't know. Thank God for mothers that care enough to understand the principle of what we're talking about. We honor our mothers because mothers are of great, great need in our society. One of the things, and I'm, I'm sure that some of you would agree with me on this, one of the things that we're having problems with in our family units is the fact that the mothers are not there and the daddies are not there. Neither one of the two. And the few that are there, most of them is the mothers that's there. The dads, they done took off. It's sad. But we're talking about something of major importance. We honor our mothers today because mothers, just like Timothy, Lois and Eunice taught this man. And he became one of the most prolific individuals in the Bible. And Paul said, I'm looking at your unfeigned faith. That's never failing faith, Timothy, that you've got. And I know where it come from. It come from your grandma and your mama. That's what's so important. So today we give honor to our mothers and we see and we understand that righteous living is the greatest thing we can do for our mothers. You want your mother to be proud of you? You live a righteous life. Son or daughter, 
You want your mother to be proud of you, you live a righteous life. That's what the Bible teaches, righteous living. He that begetteth a child shall have joy of him. Joy of him or her. Thy mother shall be glad. Thy mother shall be glad that she bore thee as her child. I recognize the fact this was a lesson to honor our mothers today, but we still extend the invitation of the gospel. If you're not a Christian, I encourage you to take advantage of the opportunity that we present each and every time that we come together as we stand and sing today. We extend the invitation of the gospel, being that if you're not a Christian, I encourage you to become one. In order to become a Christian, you're going to have to obtain your faith through the hearing of the gospel. You're going to have to believe with all of your heart that Jesus Christ is the Son of the living God. You're going to have to be willing to repent of your sins, to be sorrowful of the things that you've done that's inappropriate in the way of sin and transgressing God's law. You're going to have to confess with your mouth, and that's a simple and easy thing to do. As the preacher asked, do you believe Jesus is the Son of the living God? And you say, yes, I do. Jesus said, except you've confessed me before men, I will not be able to confess you before my Father, which is in heaven. And how do we confess? With our heart, we believe, but with our mouth, confession is made unto salvation. We're going to have to be buried in baptism and raised to walk in newness of life, having our sins washed away in the watery grave of baptism, coming in contact with the blood of Christ. Then and there, do we have to go back to the watery grave of baptism? No, we do not. That precious blood will cleanse us from sin, but we have to repent each and every time we sin to allow that blood to do its job. If you're here today and subject to the invitation, you may come right now while together we stand and sing. 453.